Well, it's 2021, and I thought I'd talk about some pretty remarkable trends that we've seen during the first six months of the year. What we're calling this is essentially a tripling of the size of the private equity industry. A tripling because in virtually every aspect of the industry, whether I look at investments or the buildup of dry powder itself or exit value, every single number you look at is about three times larger than it was just 10 years ago in 2011. And those are some amazing statistics when you think about them, particularly in historical contexts. Today on the show, I'll review a few of the key data points from Bain & Company's mid-year private equity report. Now, data points don't always equate to insights, but we're going to try and draw some inferences that we think are worthwhile to consider for the back half of 2021 and on into 2022. I'm Hugh MacArthur, head of Bain's global private equity practice, and this is Dry Powder. In deal making, we are on pace based on the first six months of the year to have over $1 trillion in transactions done in global buyouts for the first time in history. Now, for those of you that have been in the private equity industry for a long time, that is a remarkable number. You'll think back to 2006 and 2007, which were really what we called kind of the twin tower years, the big spike in, in deal value. And those were around the $800 billion mark. And from there, we dropped down to the one to $200 billion mark for the next several years while building back towards some pretty vigorous deal making from 2015 to 2020, where we averaged about $500 billion in transactions per year. So jumping from a five-year average of $500 billion to over a trillion this year, if current trends hold up, is truly remarkable. And while deal count is up from 2020, it's not up so much that deal values aren't up even more. Recall that one of the things we mused about in the private equity report was that there was a big jump in average transaction size from 2019 to 2020, up to over $700 million. So far in 2021, that $700 million has jumped again to over a billion dollars for average deal size, and that includes add-on deals. So what we're really seeing so far is an unprecedented increase in the value of transactions that have been executed over the first half of the year. When you double click on the kinds of deals that have been done, one notable thing is the continued growth of the tech sector. Tech deals now officially account for one third of all buyout deals done globally. That's 33% of all deals done up from about 15% in 2007, around the last peak of the market. And this doesn't even include other sectors that are tech dependent like FinTech or tech enabled services or healthcare IT. So there's a lot more technology going on than just this number. And what it says is that this is kind of the record trend that we're seeing in buyouts right now. And therefore, we are going to remain on this trend for the foreseeable future, certainly for the back half of this year. Now, all of these deals that are getting done need to be fueled by fundraising. When we talk to LPs, they remain unshakably devoted to private equity as an asset class. Fully 90% of LPs that Bain talked to said that they intend to either increase their allocation of private equity or have it hold constant in the coming years. And as I mentioned at the top, we have hit over $3 trillion for dry powder, and that is committed but uncalled capital. And for the very first time, buyout share of that total committed dry powder is over a trillion dollars. So over $1 trillion for buyout capital and over $3 trillion for all types of private equity, when you include venture capital, real estate, infrastructure, growth equity, direct lending, distressed secondaries and other asset classes. So truly a remarkable increase in the amount of funds as LPs get larger, as their cash piles get larger, as their allocations remain the same or increase, the amount of money flowing into the asset class is absolutely huge. And certainly that's in part what we're seeing fueling the growth in buyouts over the past six months. One of the things that we've talked about in the past are SPACs and the rise of SPACs have certainly been important in the first half. Now, probably noticed that SPAC IPO activity has slowed dramatically in 2021, primarily due to increased regulatory oversight and some shifting policy. So if you just trace the IPO count and the IPO value over the last few years, by count in 2019, we had about 59 SPACs that were announced and went public. That number rose to almost 250 in 2020. And in 2021, through the first half, it's over 350. And if we think about the corresponding values, in 2019, SPAC values were about $13.5 billion. 
That rose to over 80 billion in 2020 and over 110 billion in the first six months of 2021. So while activity has certainly slowed dramatically as there's regulatory uncertainty in the second quarter, there are a huge number of SPACs out there looking for folks to merge with. And that is going to continue to be an important part of the private equity deal ecosystem for years because these things are on a clock as well. And there are over 400 of these SPACs or about 10% of all the public companies in the United States that are out there searching for a company to merge with or buy. It is a trend that will continue to be felt regardless of new issuance over the course of the next six months and into the future. If we shift gears a little bit and talk about exits, 2021 is on track to be the biggest year ever for buyout backed exits, getting to almost a trillion dollars. To put that number in context, the highest year for exits ever in the history of the industry before 2021 was $520 billion in 2014. So we are on pace to basically double that amount in 2021, and that's the highest amount ever. If we think about IPOs, that's been kind of a bouncy track uh, over the course of the last uh, several years. But if we look at global buyout-backed exit value via IPOs in 2021, they're on pace to be 181 billion versus 81 billion in 2020. So 125% increase. And again, 181 billion is a number we've never seen before. The highest number we've ever seen before is in the $80 billion range, 2020 and 2014. Uh, If we think about SPACs as a global buyout backed exit channel uh, by value, those numbers are up over 320% in 2021. So from 40 billion 2020 to almost 170 billion this year, that is the annualized pace of SPACs. So everywhere you look, these are very, very robust exit markets historically. People are selling companies off very high valuations and we don't know what the return data is yet. It's gonna take a few more quarters before we actually see how that all plays out. But obviously, selling into these types of rising multiples, one would expect that the returns this year are going to be good on liquidated transactions. Now, let me talk about the path for fundraising. The path for fundraising is, again, on a record pace, not as big as the record pace in exits or in deal making, but at about $1.2 trillion, we would come in at 2021 in the largest fundraising deal ever. Buyout is very healthy as a share of this new capital raised. It's about 40% of all new capital raised so far. And that's a 60% increase, by the way, over 2020. But we're also seeing very large increases in venture at 36%, growth equity at almost 40%. And we're seeing some decreases in other areas like distressed and some secondaries. But again, in any six month period, it depends on who's in the market. And indeed, when you look at who's been in the market for buyout, it's been a lot of the best known names out there like EQT and KKR and Clayton Dublé and Rice and Apex, Genstar, Bain Capital, a lot of household names in private equity were out there raising in the first half and closing. And on average, those household names closed at almost 20% above target. If you look at the top 10 buyout funds that closed in the first half, they closed at an average of $10 billion. And indeed, for the first time in 2021, in the first half, we saw more than half of all buyout capital raised raised by funds that are greater than $5 billion. So the flight to firms that have been in the industry for a long time, that have actually delivered consistent results over time continues and continues to intensify. So what other things might investors be thinking about for the back half of 2021 and even into the future? We're on pace to do about 3,500 deals right now in 2021, but that would still be below the long-term average of about 4,000 deals a year, which tells me that there are still a lot of GPs out there that are wanting to get transactions done that have not been able to get them done. And that tells us that we're going to continue to see a surge in demand as LPs clamor to put their money to work and to buy companies and to add value to them. So that's point number one. Point number two is that the extraordinary rise of tech in buyouts is continuing and it is seeping into every single subsector. So one question we'd encourage every GP to ask themselves is what role does technology play in my investment strategy? Am I investing directly into tech? Is it only software? Am I invested in tech-related areas? Because it's clear that as technology is infusing itself in many, many subsectors, that the future of private equity investing, especially in buyout, is going to be about growth. And GPs need to understand how is technology likely to impact these sectors that I operate in? Do I know enough in order to underwrite with confidence? And then once I close a deal, be able to put my portfolio team on it to make sure 
that we're extracting maximum value for all of our stakeholders. So those are some of the trends that we've been noticing here at Bain & Company during the first half of 2021. No one can tell you for certain what's going to happen in the next six months of the year. But if we're in an environment of low interest rates, lots of dry powder, relative economic stability, one can bet that the deal activity is going to reflect that, the exit activity is going to reflect that, the continued enthusiasm in the LP community is going to reflect that, and that we should see very strong performance continue to the back half of the year. You can find Bain & Company's mid-year private equity report at our website, bain.com, or you can click on the link in the episode notes. I'm Hugh MacArthur. Thank you for listening. Thank you.